This is the fourth and final section of chapter eight, which is modeling and mechanics. And in this section, we're going to be looking at working with vectors. So the first thing we're going to be doing is looking at the difference between what we call a vector and what we call a scalar. So a vector, well, this has size and direction, whereas a scalar has size only. So let's look at some example of some vectors. Now, because vectors have direction, they can be positive or negative. Positive or negative. And here's some example of some vectors, so displacement. So the date displacement will give you how far you've gone and the direction you've gone in. So a displacement might be, for example, six miles to the north. A velocity, it gives you how fast you're going and the direction you're going in. So positive or negative where you will tell you whether you're going forward or backward. The same with acceleration, it'll tell you which direction you're accelerating in. And the same with uh, a force or weight. So it'll be a force and included in that will be the direction of the force. So these are examples of vectors. Scalars, which only have size object, won't tell you the direction, just the size. So distance, tell you how far to go, but not what direction. Speed, how fast to go, but not the direction. Time, well, time can only go in one direction anyway. And mass, again, it will just tell you the um, mass of something, but it won't tell you which direction that mass is acting in. Now we can convert some vector quantities to scalar quantities. So for example, displacement, if you want to find the distance represented by displacement, if you find the modulus of the displacement, that basically means doing Pythagoras on the displacement numbers, you get a distance. And with the velocity, if we find the modulus of the velocity, in other words, do Pythagoras on the velocity numbers, we get the speed. Example five, fully describe the motion of the following particles. So let's start with particle A. So particle A, you can see the velocity is positive, which means it's moving to the right. And its acceleration is positive, so it means it's increasing in that velocity to the right. Particle B, that's also moving to the right, but it's decreasing in velocity hence the negative. Now, when uh, something is decelerating, or um, that's the same as a negative acceleration slowing down, this can also be called retardation as well. And then particle C, so particle C is moving to the left and it's decreasing in velocity. So I will use the word deceleration here instead of decreasing in uh, or slowing down the same thing and then particle d i can see that this one is moving to the left but it is increasing in velocity so it's written in words here example six a particle or the velocity of a particle is given by v equals 3i plus 5j find the speed of the particle. Well, the speed of the particle is equal to the modulus of the velocity, the size of the velocity. So what we're going to do with V, we underline it because it's a vector. We're going to work out the modulus of three I plus five J, which means doing Pythagoras on the three and five. So the speed is going to be equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared. That's the square root of 34. And exactly that's 5.8309. And we want to give our answer to three significant figures. So we'll say 5.83. And we need our units, meters per second. OK, part B. The angle and direction of motion the particle makes with the unit vector i. So we're going to need to draw a sketch of this. So we'll do our x and y axis. And we know that the unit vector i goes here and the unit vector j goes there. So we'll just do a sketch. We want three across 
and five up. So remember it's only a sketch. So this is where it goes like this. This is the vector. And we want the vector it makes with the unit vector i, which is this way. So this is the angle that we need to find here. So if we call this angle here, let's call it theta. So theta is going to be equal to the tan inverse um, of the opposite over the adjacent. So tan inverse of five over three. That gives 59.0362. We want to give the angle to three significant figures. So 59.0 degrees and that's three significant figures. Example seven, a man walks from A to B and then from B to C. His displacement from A to B is 6i plus 4j. His displacement from B to C is 5i minus 12j. Part A, we need to work out the magnitude or the size of his displacement from A to C. So first of all, we need to work out what is the vector from A to C, then we can work out the magnitude of it. Well, A to C is A to B first, and then B to C. So A to B is 6i plus 4j. Now I'm using ij, you could use column vectors if you like, plus B to C, which is 5i minus 12j. So if we add those together, we will get 11i minus 8j, and that's kilometers. So that's the vector AC. We want to find the magnitude of that vector, the size of that vector. So that's the size of 11i minus 8j. So that's Pythagoras on 11 and negative 8. So 11 squared plus negative 8 squared. That's the square root of 185. That's 13.8. 6014 and we'll round that to three significant figures so 13.6 kilometers that's three significant figures okay let's move on to part b and part b is asking us to find the total distance the man has walked in getting from a to c now that's this distance plus this distance here so first of all, we want to find a distance from A to B, which is the magnitude of the vector from A to B, which is the magnitude of 6i plus 4j, and that's Pythagoras on those values. So uh, 6 squared plus 4 squared, and that's square root 52. And we want to find the magnitude, the size of the vector from B to C. So that's the magnitude of 5i minus 12j, which is Pythagoras on those numbers, 5 squared plus negative 12 squared. And that's the square root of 169. So the total distance that he's traveled is going to be square root 52 plus the square root of 169. That gives 20.2111. We want to give our answer to three significant figures. So 20.2 kilometers, and that's three significant figures. So you should now be able to do exercise 8D on page one, two, seven of the textbook. And once you've completed that, you can go on and do the mixed exercise from pages one to eight to one to nine.